Good evening, your home family. Uh, my name is Angie. I'm the sales manager for Your Home USA. Uh, tonight, this is Creators Night. Um, this is uh, Creators Night July, and our guest is Larry Noble. He is going to teach us about uh, the famous charcuterie boards or cutting boards, whatever you want to call them, um, how to mix uh, his carvings with epoxy. Um, he turns out some lovely, lovely products. Um, he caught my eye um, in our Facebook group. I fell in love with some of his work. And I said, pretty, pretty pleased he just had to do this. So uh, that's what we're doing tonight. Um, if, uh, if you have any questions, just ask them in the Facebook feed uh, attached to the live video. And I will be answering, uh, having Larry answer those as we go. Uh, tonight, the what you will see is a series of photographs and videos of Larry walking through his process. Uh, so if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Larry, and uh, he's going to show us how to do it. You're up, Larry. I'm up. Okay. I don't see anything but anything but a little emoji there in the room, but I guess we'll we'll go with that. Um, well, as Angie said, I'm Larry Noble. Uh, quick introduction: I uh, live in southeastern Tennessee, around Chattanooga. I retired five years ago from uh, food distribution, had never done any woodworking or epoxy work or anything, uh, build a new home and spend some time working on it. And about uh, three and a half, four years ago, I decided I needed a hobby to get me off the couch. So I uh, decided to start doing a little bit of woodworking, got into epoxy when I was making some wine holders out of uh, old barn beams. I was taking six by six barn beams uh, and drilling three and a half inch holes through them, making wine holders and started using epoxy to fill the cracks. And uh, so after that, I uh, kind of moved on and was looking at the epoxy and said, what else can I do? And started making charcuterie boards, serving boards. And uh, then last December, I decided to get into the CNC world. So uh, as Angie said, she uh, said, pretty pleased. She really uh, kind of virtually twisted my arm a few times to do this. So don't expect a lot here. This is my first attempt at any type of videos of my work and probably uh, might be my last, but uh, so I'm going to explain two different boards, uh, try to anyway, that uh, I made for this process and uh, one of them is typical of my boards that started from raw lumber that uh, I buy planks or slabs and create. The other one, uh, I purchased a uh, bamboo cutting board from Dollar Tree because just wanted to try something a little different. And I will walk through both of those as uh, best I can. Uh, one thing that I will say here is that what I'm going to show and explain is not necessarily the best or the right way, but it's my way of doing uh, charcuterie boards and epoxy work. Uh, I use a tabletop epoxy. Uh, a lot of people that would do serving boards would use a deep pour that you can pour uh, the, the board in one pour. Uh, the epoxy that I use being a tabletop, you can pour about a quarter of an inch deep is maximum. Uh, sometimes you can stretch that a little bit, but the manufacturer's recommendation is no more than a quarter inch. Uh, I do that for uh, uh, the main reason is that it sets up quickly. Uh, I use uh, my boards are about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick, so they are each four pores for me. I'll do a very thin layer of clear on the bottom and use that to seal the edges. I'll then do two color pours that are quarter inch uh, or maybe a little bit deeper and then a very thin clear layer on top. The advantage to doing that is that 12 hours after my last pour, I can break them out of the molds. 12 hours after that, I can actually be sanding on the products. So uh, where a deep pour needs to stay in the mold for three to four days and about a week before you can actually sand on it. Uh, I'm going to start with a brief picture that shows uh, 
uh, one of the boards uh, mocked up in easel and then go through a couple of pictures. Uh, I'm not going to really spend any time on the CNC side or uh, easel because uh, the group here probably knows more than I do about uh, the CNC and the easel. Uh, I'm still learning, thoroughly enjoy it, but uh, this is a mock-up of that board that I said that I had purchased from uh, Dollar Tree. And uh, I, uh, I carve about an eighth of an inch deep on each of these. Uh, and I um, guess that's about it here. So we can move on to uh, the next board. This is that board cut. Uh, and as you can see, it's a bamboo. It's about 12 by 16. And each of those uh, names cut into uh, with a different font. Uh, the next one is a uh, one of my more standard charcuterie boards. And this is a live edge board. This is uh, actually made out of a plank of what's called American lace wood. And uh, you can see that I've carved a honeycomb and the three B's. Here again, about an eighth of an inch deep. Uh, I use a lot of different, uh, you know, images that I can find and convert that uh, aren't copyrighted. The, the bees are separate from the honeycomb so I can move them around and position them. This is, I think, about my third of this concept that uh, all of them a little bit different. Seldom do I ever make things that are uh, the same. Stay one other, uh, after these come this on to the next picture. Um, this one not only did I sand the surface, but you can see that I've removed the the bark uh, from the edge. Uh, oftentimes, bark will not stay uh, attached to the wood. The the Epoxy bonds very well to the wood, but not uh, not to the bark. And, or well, excuse me, it will bond to the bark, but if the bark is not uh, adhered well to the wood, then it uh, creates an issue that could split. Uh, so next we've got a video that's going to show a little bit about my shop and my setup as I'm preparing to pour. Uh, so uh, as, as you can see here when the video starts, I'll explain that this is kind of a small poor day for me. And looks like we're waiting on the video, so. Do we have any sound here? First one we're going to take a we look at. We should have the sound here. going there. Nine by 13 uh, serving board that's got a uh, honeybee and honeycomb design. So the clamps are to uh, keep the wood from floating because a piece of wood like this will float and the epoxy will go underneath it. So the, the clamps keep that from happening. I don't know if everybody can hear me over the video that's not playing right now. It seems to be kind of hung up. Four pores on the solid part of the top. And uh, So I'm not getting any sound here. I don't know if others are. After this will be photographs, not videos. 
because for the most part I'm working by myself and it's kind of tough to do a video while I'm uh, pouring. We are getting the audio playing, at least on our end, Larry. I believe it is also going through, but hold on, we've got some feedback. Not hearing anything so at the moment. Sean said he did not hear anything on the video, so that may be an issue with the way Zoom is working, so. Okay, so I'll, I'll try to briefly go over what I think I said in this video, and that's that, uh, as you can see in the uh, honeycomb and bee uh, board, the clamps on the side, that is a nine by 13 so mold. what my shop looks like on a very small pole. Okay, the video came through there for a minute, but uh, the clamps are there to hold the board down uh, you know, because the wood will float on epoxy. I actually restarted the video, Larry, so if you wanna talk over that, you can. Okay, so as I was saying here, you can see the clamps. Uh, I've already poured, you can see above the board, a very thin clear layer. And then I use a brush very similar to the one, or actually so just like the one that's on the frame there to brush that clear epoxy up onto the, the live edge there. Uh, that helps seal it and uh, helps the uh, air bubbles or to uh, help keep from getting air bubbles that are released from the edge of the wood. Um, I didn't say they could hear it as well. And uh, I say about two and a half hours after I pour that clear layer, then I can go back and add another layer. Uh, when you're pouring epoxy in multiple layers, as long as uh, you the epoxy is still somewhat tacky, somewhat soft, the next layer will adhere to it. If you uh, allow it to totally dry, or cure you need to uh, sand a little bit to give an area for the next layer to bond to. This is that uh, bamboo board. This being an eighth of an inch deep carved will only take a single pour and uh, because it is again so shallow air bubbles are not really an issue so I don't bother to uh, seal this. Um, so I think that uh, hopefully I covered everything that I should have on that. Next video. Um, Let me bring up the next video for you here, Larry, in just a moment. Uh, the next should just be a couple of photographs, I think. Very simple. Um, and while we're waiting, and they'll, they'll come up and you can just move through the two. I use uh, a lot of times just uh, disposable plastic cups for mixing. Uh, you, there's a couple of programs on the internet that you can get that will calculate the volume. Uh, based on the dimensions of the space. And uh, the one thing made about these cups that are, uh, these are from Dollar uh, General, is that the lines on them actually do represent ounces. So you can, uh, if you start using them, you can actually take three ounces, four ounces, you can pour it up to that, you know, a certain line and then pour it into a measuring cup and it'll tell you, uh, you know, how much that line equals. And uh, so when I'm mixing like this, I'm using a one-to-one -one product that you can see in the background, it's called Super Clear. So I'm just pouring equal amounts into the two cups uh, based on my calculations of how much I need. The next photograph, you will see that then just mix the two together. And uh, one of them is much thicker than the other. So you typically dump the thin into the thick, comes out of the cup much easier. And then if we can go on to the next one, um, I'm adding just some dry powdered pigment to this epoxy. And uh, for me, it's just a, you know, whatever looks good. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time measuring it. You can use the, by recommendation, up to 10%. So you can get it pretty thick. And uh, I like some good bold colors. So I will typically, um, you know, put quite a bit into it to make sure that the color comes out the way that I want. Um, okay, we can move on to the next video and see if we are getting sound there. While that uh, video is loading, um, do you have a recommendation for the types of pigments you use? 
So I primarily use powdered pigments. They're mica pigments. Uh, it gives you, you'll see in some of this, a nice swirl pattern because there is a mica uh, mixture to them. So you end up with kind of a multicolored. There's a couple of, when I use black and sometimes white, I'm looking for a more solid. So there are liquid pigments. Uh, my two favorite pigments are either black diamond or eye candy. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to mention names here, but I don't, uh, I'm not associated with any of them with uh, the epoxy company or the pigment company. So I'm not uh, making anything off of advertising them, but uh, both of those have some excellent pigments, very brilliant colors. And as you saw in the one picture, super clear is the epoxy I use. And uh, I go through between 40 and 50 gallons a year of that product. Cool, thanks. All right, next video is ready. So, so it's been about 10 minutes since I mixed the uh, color pigment into this epoxy and it's been sitting here. And as you can see, the top is covered with bubbles. Uh, as the uh, bubbles rise through this, there's a couple of ways to deal with bubbles. Um, one of which is heat, either through a heat gun, uh, some use hair dryers or a butane torch. Um, we'll look at that process a little later. Right now, as I'm getting ready to pour this, I'm gonna use alcohol. And this is 99% alcohol. You wanna use at least 91% alcohol. The typical uh, rubbing alcohol that you'll get at a drugstore is gonna be about 70% and there's too much water in that. So I'm gonna give this uh, a light spray in the cup. And as you can see, it uh, makes the bubble disappear pretty quick. It thins it a little bit and as the uh, alcohol evaporates, it helps clear the bubbles, but you can see that there's still constantly bubble rising. So uh, this is just to get rid of some of them before I pour it into the mold. Also on my molds, I will take and spray a light coating of alcohol before I make the pour. So I'm going to do a light coat in the deep area there, and then I'm going to spray a little bit uh, honeycomb cutout. What this allows it to do is the alcohol below the epoxy allows some of the bubbles that are at the bottom to uh, rise to the top a little easier. Okay, okay so uh, there again, I'll just touch on the high points, uh, alcohol uh, thins the epoxy, allows the uh, bubbles to uh, float up a little bit. So that's why I put it on the bottom. It rises through and helps bring the bubbles out. And uh, it uh, helps, pop so the or not sure. helps pop the bubbles on the surface. That is the one disadvantage to a tabletop or a thin uh, pour epoxy is that it is thicker and it is a little more difficult to get the bubbles out. And so uh, a little more work there where on the, uh, the deep pour, it's a very thin, almost like water. And, uh, but again, it takes much longer for it to cure. And I didn't mention before, but you saw in that picture, I work in about a one car garage shop. So, uh, if I was to use the deep pour, my shop would be tied up for about three days while I just sat there and I couldn't do anything else. Um, so the next video, or actually it's two videos, um, kind of breaks up in the middle because it was too long. I had to split it in the middle when I sent it to Angie. And so I think they kind of overlap, but uh, we're gonna go through those. And this is of me pouring the uh, B board. And uh, again, any questions, fire them off to Angie and I'll try to answer. Okay, not so, or not sure how successful this will be. I'm going to try to hand hold the iPhone while I'm pouring epoxy here. Uh, if I uh, have to, I'll set the phone down in between and then try to come back to it uh, to show you the end result. Uh, as I think I said before, the honeycomb on this is cut about an eighth of an inch deep. And so this can be done with a single pour. I'm using what's called a tabletop epoxy that has uh, a typical maximum thickness of uh, a quarter inch. Uh, some of it will only go about an eighth of an inch. So uh, 
but these are carved in eighth, so we should be just fine. And uh, again, I'm just filling up the cavities, uh, trying not to overfill too much. Uh, you definitely want to be to the top, but uh, any excess has to be sanded off. Uh, you don't want to be too far below because if uh, you're making a serving board like this, you really want the epoxy level with the wood so that there really isn't any areas for food to sit in. Uh, so uh, whatever level you get here, the goal will be at the end to uh, sand the wood back to the level of the epoxy. I'm using a uh, pigment here called Aztec Gold from a company named Black Diamond. So before I uh, mixed the epoxy, I measured the uh, space above that is uh, about three quarters inch deep. And using an epoxy calculator that's available online, I uh, figured that I needed about five ounces of epoxy to do that space uh, a third of an inch deep. There's already about an eighth of an inch clear on the bottom. I will do two pours of about a third of an inch and uh, then another about an eighth of an inch on the top of clear. And the clear will give you a little bit of depth to the uh, to the Okay, so that's where I split it and we'll hopefully start where I somewhere close to where I left off. We'll um, be at the end to uh, sand the wood back to give me just a second here larry i'm trying to get to where we overlap there okay and for any of you who caught it i did say that you know i was pouring a uh, about a third of an inch deep you again i i press it sometimes depending upon the thickness of my pour uh, they recommend quarter i can go a little more than that This will be the remainder of that video. Of an inch, and uh, then another about an eighth of an inch on the top of clear. And the clear will give you a little bit of depth to the uh, to the area. So there, the honeycombs are full. Looks like everything is at least to the the top. A little bit of uh, overpour. So now I'm going to fill this and again the goal is to to get about a third of an inch of epoxy on top of the clear that's already there. Okay, so uh not, not the smoothest video, I apologize for that, but uh, that is the, uh, the pour process on that. I believe the next video I have when we're ready is pouring some of the, uh, the bamboo board, some of the words of the different types of cheeses. So uh, we can move on to that when we're ready. Back to the second board that I talked about earlier. Uh, as you can see, I've gone ahead and filled in some of the wording, some of the text with uh, epoxy that I had left over from uh, the honeycombs and also another board that uh, I'm working on this time. I've mixed up three different epoxies here that uh, have been sitting again for about 10 minutes. As you can see, there's some bubbles on them. So I'm gonna give them a quick spray with the alcohol to help release some of the bubbles. I'm also going to spray the surface of this board as I talked about before and get a little bit of alcohol down into uh, the text which helps again relieve the bubbles. Uh, my, my camera
camera person disappeared on me. So now I'm going to try to uh, pour this while holding the camera and uh, not get too shaky. So same process that I used on the bees. And uh, so here we go. And hopefully my hand doesn't get in the way as I'm trying to see what, what I'm doing. You have to have rock steady hands to do that pour, don't you? Yeah, it uh, again trying to hold with one and pour with the other and try to see around with what I'm doing. The uh, the good thing about this is that uh, it's spaced far enough apart that I don't have to be too worried about overflow. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this someplace. Can everybody oh, hear me, Angie? When I'm oh. camera yes. as I pour the rest of them, I'll go ahead and pour and then come back. Okay, so uh, I, I looks like I might have missed sending a picture or a video of, of the bees, but uh, I mentioned them there. I did the same thing. Um, one thing I started to say there is that at times, and I don't know if I mentioned this in one of the videos still to come, but uh, if I have pores that are two or they're close together, the multiple colors, I will use a hot glue gun to actually create a dam or a barrier between those fields so that I can pour two different colors very close together without them uh, running into the other. Uh, this board was, the words were far enough apart, I didn't have to worry about that. And so I didn't put a barrier between them. I was able just to pour the colors and not over pour too much and keep them from flowing together. Um, Okay, well, we can move on to the next video. Give me just one second here, Larry. It looks like the next okay. video is the follow up for the rest of the bamboo board here. Okay. Not too sure how well this is going to show up, but uh, as you can see on this, there are a few bubbles on the surface. So Got a propane torch here that I'm just going to quickly run across. And the if you're using both the torch and alcohol is timing. Uh, you could use the torch and then if you want uh, spray the surface with alcohol, but if you spray with alcohol first, don't use the torch for well, about five, 10 minutes because 99% uh, alcohol is extremely flammable. All right, Larry, just as an FYI, the torch did obliterate a lot of the audio at the beginning of that video, so you may want to speak to that. Okay. I was thinking to myself that I can't wait to read the reviews, you know, and the tomorrow on the filming of this because that was pretty bad. Uh, but uh, as I said in the video or tried to and said earlier that I'm using a uh, small propane butane torch that you can pick up at Home Depot or whatever to uh, just wave the flame across the epoxy surfaces. It uh, pops the bubbles that have risen, warms it up a little bit, that allows uh, the uh, bubbles to come to the surface easier. And uh, this uh, epoxy has about a 35 to 45 minute work time to where uh, you can continue to work it to make sure that the bubbles have risen to the surface and that you've popped everything that it can. Uh, one thing that I did state there that I'm going to make sure it came through clear is that if you're using a combination of uh, the torch and alcohol, be very careful. 
uh, because alcohol is the 99% is extremely flammable. So uh, if you uh, have sprayed it with alcohol, you wait a uh, good five, 10 minutes before you wanna hit it with a torch. Uh, and uh, I use a combination of both because typically as I, it may not have come through in one of the earlier videos, I normally am working uh, eight, 10, 12 boards at one time. So I'm moving around the shop quite a bit and trying to keep the bubbles moving uh, through on a lot of them. Uh, at some point in one of the videos, I believe I will discuss the swirls. You probably saw when I was pouring the B board that the gold had um, a couple of different colors in it. You could see the mica uh, highlighting some of the epoxy. And there's a period that you can swirl that and get those uh, colors to stay. Uh, they kind of flatten out otherwise. So uh, hopefully I covered everything there and that so we can move on to the next video. I forgot to take a picture or record before I started sanding. So uh, this has taken uh, one pass through my belt sander before I remembered that I hadn't done anything um, before this, but this hey, can, uh, came out of the mold. Can we stop this video? Hours after my last pour. Sure can, Larry. Okay, so um, I apologize. Obviously I've missed something here. Uh, I sent these off to Angie the day before I went on vacation and never got back to them and really paid attention. And so um, one of the things that I was mentioning just before that started is that the work time on this epoxy. So when I poured the first layer of the gold into the bees, I waited about two and a half hours and then came back and did a second pour. Uh, looks like somehow I've missed that video i apologize for that but i did the second pour of the clear and then uh about 30 35 minutes after that i will use a bamboo skewer or popsicle stick something thin like that to uh to swirl that epoxy uh, when we go back to this video uh, on the sanding um, you'll see in the gold epoxy some swirls in there that uh, you can see the, the different colors in the pigment. And uh, somehow I miss, I guess that video, I apologize, but uh, that's the process there that you just you swirl it, you do it, uh, um, and then sit and wait. If it starts to lose the swirls, if they start to settle back down, then you need to do it again until the epoxy holds the swirls, The design whatever you're trying to put into it to uh, get the multicolored in the pigment. So uh, evidently I missed that. And so uh, we're, we're now out of the mold. Uh, as I said in the start of this video, I've already sent this for one pass through the drum sander. And uh, that, uh, so we'll go back to that video and then I'll talk about the sanding process. I forgot to take a picture or record before I started sanding. So uh, this has taken uh, one pass through my belt sander before I remembered that I hadn't done anything um, before this, but this uh, board came out of the mold approximately 12 hours after my last pour. And then 24 hours after the last pour, I can start the sanding process. Uh, I fortunately have a, have a drum sander, so uh, I will run this through a drum sander a number of times to get it back to uh, the wood surface and then start with a random orbital, orbital sander after that to uh, get the detail. So again, this is what it looks like uh, right after it's come out of the mold or 24 hours after the last pour. And again, one pass through the drum sander. I'll take a photograph again as it's done with the drum sander before I start with uh, the uh, handheld sander. Okay, so I guess we can move on to the next one. And Give me just one second here, Larry. Okay.
This board has now been sanded to uh, 220 grit. So the next step uh, that I'm going to take on it is wet sanding. And Can we the, pause for a second? What I'm going to do is I just got a... Uh, so I, I just mentioned that it had been sanded to 220. Uh, my belt sander or drum sander, I run at 120. And so 120 grit. Uh, once it uh, has taken the epoxy back to the wood surface, back to where everything is level and the excess, and as I said, I start with a random orbital. I will start with uh, two or 120, the same as that I had in the drum sander, and we'll use that until uh, all of the horizontal lines, the straight lines that um, were on the board. And I thought I had that on a video, so it might come up here in a minute. Of, I might have given them to them in the wrong order. So uh, it, um, but then after the 120, I will move to 150 and then 180 and then 220 with the random orbital sander. You, uh, you need to move through all of the different grits and uh, because each of them, you know, sanding will leave uh, smaller scratches in the uh, epoxy and you need to move through all of them because skipping them, the, the finer grit will not take out the bigger scratches. So uh, again, this has gone through all of those steps uh, until uh, I've gotten to the 220. So uh, we can go on here. Bottle of water here, uh, sprayer. And I'm just going to spritz the top of this board a little bit, as you can see, and uh, let that soak in for a few seconds and uh, start to evaporate. There's uh, two reasons here. Epoxy dealers or, or workers will spray with and wet sand uh, to kind of bring the shine out. And, uh, but uh, also as a woodworker, when you're working with a lot of woods, that as you sand, the small uh, hairs, if you will, of the wood, the grain, uh, kind of flatten out and don't sand off. What this process does is that uh, as the wood starts to dry a little bit and the water evaporates, it's going to uh, cause those small fibers to uh, stand up and allow the next grit of sandpaper to actually sand them off. So again, a little bit of spritz, rub the water around to make sure it gets everywhere, let it sit for a few, and then I'm going to sand this to uh, with the uh, 320 grit, uh, same as I've done the others, and then I will repeat the process for a 400 grit. I'll be doing the same process on the bamboo board, but uh, not showing it in the video here. Thank you. Okay, so uh, again, I explained what was going on in that process. So whenever we're ready, we can move on to the next one. I think what we ended up happening, Larry, is we had two videos that were the same file size. So our seventh and eighth video are the same. So I'm going to have to move on to our ninth and final video, which oh, I yeah. believe is your last step of sanding. Okay. So give me just a moment. Well, we're down to my favorite part of the whole process. So these two boards have now been sanded from 120 to 400, as I explained the last two steps being wet sanded. So it's now time to finish. Uh, I use just a food grade mineral oil. That's all I use to finish. Uh, some people might use uh, a cutting board conditioner that's got a beeswax in it as well. I've used that in the past, but uh, I've settled on pretty much just doing the mineral oil. So now I'm going to uh, apply a liberal amount of mineral oil to the surface of this board. And then just rub it around, get it soaked, get it to where it can uh, soak into the board. I'll uh, repeat this process over the next uh, half hour, 45 minutes as it uh, soaks into the wood, you'll be able to see where it will need more. Um, I will again use a rag to make sure the edges get a good soaking of the oil as well. And then uh, flip it over, do the back, 
and then flip it over and do the front again. So uh, you want uh, you want the board to suck up as much mineral oil as it can, and uh, then when I sell these, I also uh, give care instructions and recommend that uh, they be re-oiled every month or so, depending upon use and how many times they're uh, wiped off with water and uh, to keep the wood from drying out. The, uh, even if they're not used, if they're just set on display, since they are only finished with a mineral oil, they uh, will dry out over time. So they should be uh, refinished with mineral oil on a regular basis in uh, my booth when I sell boards. I'm sorry about that. I guess I ought to pay more attention to the video. I uh, also sell two ounce bottles of mineral oil just to encourage people to uh, keep them finished. But uh, they're, they're really wet right now with the oil, but as you can see, it really brings out the grain and the wood as well as the color of the epoxy. Okay, um, I guess at this point, uh, uh, there's a couple of finished pictures of the boards that I'll show you. Again, I apologize for missing uh, one of the steps in there where I put the, the last coat of epoxy on. But uh, that's pretty much the process. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if Angie's got any questions. Um, they're... Uh, so here's a finished picture of the uh, the B board, and as you can see, the mica pigment allows for you know some real nice color in the two tone uh, with the pigment. The Bs are done with just a flat single tone, and so they're going to be just kind of a flat black. Uh, as I said, I put a clear over the top that gives you some depth, and uh, this wood, by the way, is called American lace wood which is actually a quarter sawn sycamore. And uh, uh, it's been, become one of my favorite woods to work with. It's a beautiful grain in it. Uh, a lot of board makers will pour a flood coat, as they call it, over the top to where the wood is covered with all epoxy. And uh, I'm still a woodworker at heart. I don't like that. Uh, so uh, I sand all of mine back to the natural wood surface where the wood that you see has nothing on it. And that's why, again, I coat with mineral oil to protect the wood and uh, that they need to be redone. Uh, the next picture should be the, uh, the bamboo board and uh, with uh, finished and a uh, finished picture. So as I said at the beginning of this, this was my first attempt at this and maybe my last after watching myself. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I do have a, uh, a Facebook page if you want to uh, see some of my other work. It's Noble Woodcraft on Facebook. And uh, I, I don't really sell much online. Most of my sales are done uh, through local public markets here. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy getting out and talking to people and uh, visiting with people to markets and uh, it's a retirement hobby for me. So I don't do a whole lot of selling online, but I do ship on occasion. Uh, and I'm more than happy to uh, answer any questions. Uh, I don't mind sharing process or some of the different things I do. Uh, I do quite a few different things. As I mentioned uh, earlier, I do wine holders, uh, cigar ashtrays because this is the deep South and uh, different items that uh, uh, are in my booth. It, it can be pretty busy, but uh, feel free if you uh, stumble across my page to send me messages, ask questions. Uh, also, uh, again, just my uh, personal page is uh, Larry Noble. I do post different things, different times uh, on a lot of the epoxy site as well as your homes page. So uh, feel free to ask questions or message me if you'd like. Larry, I actually had a question for you. I didn't see it get posted. The molds that you're using, anything special wood-wise or pre-treatment before you have to start pouring? Okay, that's a good question. I should, guess I should have covered it. So the molds that I use, I make out of MDF. Uh, and they are all 
cut in advance and then each piece is covered with clear packing tape because uh, the, the epoxy will stick to the MDF. It'll actually stick to any wood. Uh, there's some processes using a product called HDPE, I think it is. It's a, it's a plastic product that you can use and the epoxy won't stick to it. But for cost purposes, flexibility, I use MDF. Uh, I cut uh, the pieces to size, cover them with packing tape and then screw them together. And then I also use a silicone spray on them each time before I pour. Uh, that allows me to get it out, the piece out of the mold easily. And each of my molds have, have uh, probably at this point poured 15, 20 boards. So they, they last quite a while if you take care of them. And uh, I have two standard sizes. I do a nine by 13 and I do a 12 uh, by 18. And uh, I do a few uh, other ones and molds that I've purchased that are silicones across and around that are a little tough to make with the MDF. But what you saw there on the B board was made out of MDF. All right, I appreciate that. That was the question I came up with. Um, okay. Angie's checking to make sure we don't have any additional questions for you from anybody that is currently viewing. Yeah, we, we've had uh, uh, up to uh, 29 viewers and uh, so far your comments are just telling you hello, you really know your stuff, they're really impressed. Um, uh, the beautiful, uh, beautiful products and Lacewood is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate all that and I appreciate anybody that stuck through me through this uh, presentation uh, and look forward to possibly hearing from some of you in the future. Angie, Jim, thank you. I appreciate your help with this. And uh, yep. if, all right. Well, uh, we want to thank uh, Larry for his talent and sharing his knowledge uh, with us. Um, if anyone has any questions, just post them on the video. We'll, uh, we'll monitor that for the next little bit to see uh, and try to get your questions answered. You also, like Larry said, can, can uh, contact him directly and he'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, so that's that's it for Creators Night for July. Uh, we appreciate uh, you guys joining us. Um, we are uh, um, looking for uh, suggestions on anything that you would like us to cover in Creators Night. Um, we're also going to be doing um, some uh, YouTube uh, uh, YouTube learning channel uh, coming up um, uh, to teach various different things about all of our machines. Uh, so if you have any suggestions on what you would like to learn, please let us know, uh, support at yourhome.com, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take as many suggestions as we can. Thank you for joining us, and have a wonderful evening. Good night, all.